This is SIB in radio. In radio. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Select USA TV. This is SIB in radio. I want to ask you a question. Who's coaching you? Who's asking you the tough questions? Who's telling you, man, you're the common denominator to all of your issues and challenges? Who's telling you, man, all day long you become the magnetic pulse that attracts to you both good and bad? I want to be your life coach. I want to be the one that cheers you on to the finish line. I want to be the one that you ask the tough questions. And it doesn't mean that I have all the answers, but that means that you have a partner, someone who believes in you, not the you you see right now, but the you you can't imagine, the you that you are to become, the you you are destined to be. I always say we both need the positive and the negative. It's not enough to have the knowledge of the matter. But we must have the wisdom as well. For well, wisdom settles it. And that's what I want to offer you as you join me on the Coach's Corner. I want to offer you the wisdom of the matter. Maybe it might be relationships. Talking about our campaigns for more, for life. The dark world for our subconscious. Our spiritual journey. Whatever it is, I want to be there to encourage you, to build you, to chunk you to cheer you on to the finish line. I'm qualified to do this. Why? Because I'm you. Because I'm you. That's right. I'm you. My name is Marcus Sillette. Thank you so much for joining us right here on The Culture's Corner. We thank you and appreciate all of you guys you. joining in right here on The Culture's Corner. And assuredly, as I always say, I have my issues. Uh, most assuredly, I have my issues personally and professionally. But I hope I bring to the table the wisdoms and the understandings, the scars from the battles of life that I have fought. I'm sure you have the same. But as I bring those wisdoms to you, I trust that I have earned and will earn the right to speak into your life. And assuredly, I would not be uh, integral if I did not thank all of the listeners worldwide for listening. Uh, from the Facebook fan page, The Coach's Corner, we do have a Facebook fan page. We'd like for you to go over there and like that page. D-A-C-O-A-C-H-C-O-R-N-E-R. The Coach's Corner right there on Facebook. I need to hear from you. Thank you so much for my Spreecast listeners, VoiceCast. Thank you so very much. Those that are listening on the Blog Talk Radio format, thank you. You stream, YouTube, and uh, Twitter, by all means, thank you so very much. And I know I've missed out on one. Sometimes when I'm running into Studio B, I don't grab the notes out of the tray as I should. I just jump into the seat and pray that I'm ready for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Thank you, Mr. Engineer, for all your help. <laughs> I want to talk today again about the secrets to love and finding love. And I was thinking, I always like to tell you what I'm thinking about love before I can get to the content of the, of the show. Uh, I was thinking about all the different people that have L-O-V-E in all the different types of situations. And for some reason or another, my mind went over to uh, areas that are more remote, areas that uh, have a little less contention in culture, more tradition uh, per perhaps in their culture. And uh, maybe even some of you listening to me in the mountains, those of you that are listening to me over in Europe, Asia, Africa, uh, you don't have... Uh, uh, all of the contentions that the American or the Western culture have, but you have your own, uh, assuredly. So, uh, you know, I was thinking about all the different situations where love relationships evolve. And I want you to think about that uh, as well. I mean, there are people that are that are trying to find their way uh, in love, for love, and beyond um, you have orphanage children uh, for example who have never been accepted and have been abandoned rejected by society maybe perhaps by their village or by their tribe or 
or maybe there was a war-torn area that they held from. Um, and then, of course, you have those who have been abused sexually and uh, those that have been molested, those who have been abused physically. Uh, you know, you have all kinds of, you have the rich and the well-to-do who held from families where no, respond to personal responsibility, though that seems to be political message of one political party, is absent, you know, it's, it's absent. Personal responsibility, personal accountability, they do whatever they want, whenever they want. Uh, you have all kinds of people evolving on the love scene, is my point. And when you think about it, it is such a mixture uh, of dynamics that they bring to the culture of love. Uh, and so I want you to be mindful of that as you're raising your kids, as you're speaking to your teenagers. Uh, because, you know, I'm reading this book, My Daddy Taught Me That, by Kenan Lake. And by the way, those of you that are our single mothers out there we are going we're in the process now of, of producing and putting together the show uh, the Keenan Lake show and uh, it's going to be very interesting because it's going to be helpful for those who are raising young boys particularly but those who are single parents and all the tapestry that goes with parenting and beyond uh, but I'm reading this book and I it was it was interesting to see how that uh, his father played a very significant role. And one of the things he said in the book is that it is better to live the life as the example because more often than not, children pick up on what they see and not what they hear. And so I, I want to just, in, before I get into my content for today, I want to encourage you along these lines. I, I know it's difficult. I, I really know it's difficult. Matter of fact, the second thing that I was thinking about before getting on air today is is that you know sometimes you just don't want to even think about it you don't even want to care you know and and, and i understand uh because love is 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 heavy it's heavy and the other thing that i was thinking about i'm trying to th i always like to share with you what i'm thinking about regarding to the content that we're disseminating on the air um i can't there was one more thing that i was thinking about very heavily uh it might come back to me but today we're going to talk about uh, at least briefly, the four types of love, the four types of love. And I, I hope that you are jotting down notes and, um, uh, you know, putting these things in your journal. C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The, the Four Loves. C.S. Lewis is a, a fantastic author, uh, Christian philosophy, if you will. Um, and uh, that book, The Four Loves, covers these C.S. Lewis uh, covers the the the, the spectrum uh, of connection, uh, and and no matter who you are, what your preference is, and and all of that. And so first, we want to talk about storge, S T O R G E, storge. Uh, these are Greek words, by the way. Um, <clears throat> the Greeks had something unique in the wording, uh, but affection. Uh, that fondness through familiarity, uh, somewhat like a brotherly love in between family members uh, or people otherwise, uh, uh, you know, that are very close, maybe schoolmates, um, you know, co-workers. Uh, but uh, Storge is described as a natural, um, uh, a, n a more natural love uh, without coercion, uh, and uh, what else can I say about storge? Um, I want to really say that it's what we often use more more than any other love, you know, because we got our homegirls, you know, we got our homeboys, you know, if you're a part of a, uh, 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 what do they call those things where when you're in college, uh, you know, you're part of the, um, I can't think of the name of it. And sometimes my brain just goes completely dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's completely serious. I mean, every time I get on the mic, it's like a test. Okay. Uh, no matter how much you study or no matter how much you try to prepare, you know, it's just, sometimes it just goes dead. But storge affection is the one we use more than any other love, in my opinion. Um, and so philea, P H I L I A is more of the friendship love. You know, that's more like your home girl, you know, your home boy, 
you know you got the boys but then you got your home boy you know and uh the friendship uh, is is a strong bond between people who share common interests or common activities you know and uh, uh c.s lewis uh immediately dis differentiates between friendship love and other loves and he describes the friendship as the least biological organic instinctive uh necessary of our loves you know uh and he uses this point to explain that friendship is exceedingly profound because it is freely chosen very well said c.s lewis is a fantastic author I used to read a little bit of him as a child, uh, Lewis explains that true friendships, like the friendship between David and Jonathan in the Bible, is almost a lost art. Uh, and it kind of wants me, it tempts me to talk more about attractions and friendships and how uh, we have crossed the boundaries regarding friendships and attractions. But I won't talk about that today, maybe another time. The third type of love the one we so desire is eros e r o s that love is the sense of being in love or loving someone this is distinct from sexuality uh eros romance you know people think that if you get married uh that if you get married on the premise of eros love uh, that it will last but actually it will not because what you think is romantic changes under the pre and under the environmental pressures of life under the environmental and circumstantial pressures of life eras can change on a whim for instance if your home is blown away off the foundation you know or if you lose your job or if your child dies or you know something tra tra drastic and 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 and, and, and catastrophic uh eris love can dull very quickly very quickly uh and lewis concludes that eris can become a god to people who fully submit themselves to it there are some people who who whose outcome uh of their journey has to have a romantic feel to it Hence, they are now tied to, it's like, it's like a drug, you know, hence tied to a love, uh, a level of love, eros, that is not, it's not possible to sustain by itself romance. Um, uh, romance is not meant to be the central focus of love. It is, I think it is the extension of covenant and commitment. It is the cream, de la cream of the situation not the center the core you know um, but but people have uh, when you have a lot of dysfunction when you have a lot of uh, 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 disappointment in the air a lot of disenfranchisement you know, a lot of frustration agitation then we seem to want now to feel good and that's a natural progression of our emotions of course but then we with the culture particularly the western culture and maybe this may be the same way around the world uh the feel good that we want is that that romance someone to tell us sweet nothings uh someone who looks uh you know just absolutely i always say that girl is so fine she broke the f in the word you know what i mean um uh, and so we, we you know we we seem to gravitate toward the sense ram the 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 eros desire you know and then of course the fourth word is agape uh, on which hinges all loves unconditional love uh, agape c.s lewis says is the love that brings forth caring regardless of the circumstances and lewis recognizes that this is the greatest or he acknowledges that this is the greatest of all loves agape you know, and another session I want to share with you some some tidbits uh, about agape, but not today. So there is your four levels of love. You have storge, affection, right? You have philea, friendship. You have eros, romance, and you have agape, unconditional. 
okay? And what we have to do is we have to first look at our lives and say, okay, have I had the balance of the four? Chances are we, chances are we have not, but it's just a good question to ask. Have I had the balance of affection? No, I have not. Somebody said, <laughs> you know, have I had great friendships? Somebody else has had, has, you know, may say, yes, I have. Oh, I got great friendships. You know, my, my collegiate friends, you know, uh, and so forth and so on. Have I had great romances? Somebody would say, oh, I've had plenty of those. You know, we boast of those more often than not. And then have I walked in unconditional love? And I must say that of the of the four levels of love, there is one love that has to be trusted in order to see the benefits. For instance, Storge, uh, and I think it may be an element of that in all these, but essentially agape has to be trusted. There has to be faith involved. But let's just go back. Storge, affection. Uh, you can have affection for someone who does not have the same toward you. Uh, it could be due to, uh, let's just say, for instance, uh, heroism. You know, if you've been abandoned and you've been rejected, uh, if you've been uh, neglected, uh, and you've been denied uh, security and bonding for you growing up has been suspect at best then you're going to tend to be more affectionate toward people easy easily I'm no psychologist by no means and uh, I did study a lot of psychology as a child my mother was uh, going to college and one of the things we had to do when we grew up as African Americans is read and so what I would do to try to impress my parents because they were so astute about uh, astute about learning uh, I would take my mother's college books and I would read them and no matter how hard it was to read I would make myself read those books and I'm talking six seven eight nine years old um, so uh, my mother was in college off and on throughout my childhood and I think she's back in college now. Well, she was back in college at Cleveland State there in Cleveland, Ohio. But, uh, you know, affection, if you, you know, each one of these levels depend on our level of exposure, our level of healing, our level of interaction uh, with wholeness as the goal, you know. And so... I have found that those who have been fr frustrated, you know, disenfranchised, rejected, have bonding issues, they tend to be more affectionate. And it's also dependent upon your personality. And maybe it's another another uh, season we're going to have uh, some people on and, and talk about personalities. Uh, and also hinges on your personality, the type of personality that you have, whether you're a right side, right brain uh, person or a left brain person, things of that nature. But essentially, my point to you is this, that each one of these levels still require you to look at love f from your experience, from your exposure. But the last of these, which is agape, is the most healing of all the loves, and it requires faith. It requires faith. For example, for existence, one of the attributes of agape love is forgiveness. Is forgiveness. Now, those who violate the human potential, particularly for children uh, and beyond, you know, young adults, teenagers as well, those who violate the human intention, the human evolution, the human development process, uh, put a dagger in the heart of love's journey. Because to survive those incidents and accidents and circumstances, one has to mask. One has to... Uh, walk in a level of pretentiousness, as I've discussed in the past. And so they don't have the full benefit always of processing what happened to them. And so they hang around the peripherals of 
these other three loves because if you interact with agape in any continued circumstances, in any continued uh, session of life, it requires agape, faith, it requires faith in the attributes of that type of love. Uh, and steady faith because agape never disappoints it never disappoints it may take some time to show and manifest its fruits but I promise you this that agape never disappoints and so my point to you is that often we gravitate toward these other three because they may or may not require faith they may or may not require a spiritual connection they may or may not uh, reveal the masking or the pretentiousness that we so display. But once you come in contact with agape, it reveals the true you and it embraces you no matter where you are. And more often than not, we are not ready for that. That's why sometimes those of you that are meeting good men and good women are running into problems because Perhaps, you know, you've detoxed from your old lifestyle. You've detoxed from these other areas of love as being the central focus by which you operate or, or, or have been the central method of operation, as they say, you know. And so now you have had an encounter with a, agape and you're starting to meet women that are good, if you will, quote unquote, men that are good. But it doesn't work for you because if you meet someone that is good, you know, good to you or good for you, absence of these other three dimensions of love. Now, they may be they may be congruently connected, but I'm just saying that you met them on the premise of unconditionalism, if I, if that's a word, unconditionalism. The journey that led you to them was the exposure to agape. But once you get there, right, it requires you to demask. And that's painful. And we run from pain. And so let's just say, for instance, you know, your exposure to your church or your synagogue uh, uh, your pastor, your rector, your bishop, and you know your Bible study, your devotional, uh, your meditative time has led you to a aha moment, and in this aha moment, you have an encounter uh, that requires you to receive the embrace of acceptance and to receive the bond. Uh, of of your potentiality which is God loving you and having a plan for you and so forth and so on and it, it requires you to embrace that and so let's just say that while you're by yourself that you begin the process of this amazing journey uh, this amazing journey to walk down love's path and to see because when you walk into the arms of agape the healing balm is so strong. The soothing, its soothing peace is so tranquil. Its, its, its relativity becomes where you're, wherever you're open to change and open to release. See, agape is bad to the bone. And so we often have throughout our lives, we can say that I have, I have, I, I've embarked upon this journey uh, of love that embraces me that heals me that soothes me and and so let's just say that you're by yourself during this time and now because you have an orientation to a love unlike no other you begin now to meet p others on that same path who have at least the intention the intention of let, uh, letting agape being the, be, be the leading love of their lives. Not eros, not romance being the leading love, not friendship being the leading love. 
uh, not not uh, affection being the leading love, but letting that agape be the leading love, right? And so you meet this person who has also, in and of themselves, embraced this agape experience to some degree, at least orientation. You know, orientation like when you get that new job, you get you have to have orientation. It's three days, you know, or two days, or or you know, or or sixteen hours, whatever the case may be. You know, and so orientation it's neither neither that you are not exposed but you're not necessarily on the job you know to practice agape but you just been orientated into its arms and so now you meet someone else who's attractive and someone else who is loving and someone else who is fine and that and and what makes them even more 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 beautiful is the fact that they are their outward matches their inward their their love their they've been orientated to love themselves from the top down to embrace love from the top down rather than from the bottom up and so now here here's the problem here's the problem uh, what happens when you run into another person see you were fine when you were by yourself you know you were making some kind of progress you were going to all the orientation sessions and, you know they ask you know I'm just making this up just give you a scenario you know it's like angelically where you were asked you know is there any questions is there anything that you want to discuss is there anything that you need to put on the table gently and kindly and lovingly but yet persistently uh, in your private time you had to demasks to embrace but then you meet someone as I said that is now uh, also on the same journey and when it comes to agape you must demask I don't know that may not even be a word either but you must you must take the mask off see agape would not allow you to be pretentious for agape sees you in your nakedness all of your faults are exposed all of your intentions are exposed uh, but agape is not keeping a record of your wrongs agape is not saying I'm going to get you agape is not saying I'm going to antagonize you because you don't believe X Y and Z agape is sitting there accepting you and waiting for you to open your arms and accept the acceptance the agape is sitting there loving you wooing you soothing you giving you peace beyond the intellect telling you that put reason down and pick faith up that's agape wooing you encouraging you persuading you but you meet this person who's also on the same journey and having only perhaps been orientated maybe they've been orientated you know for two weeks because you know you know you got the first orientation when you go to a job and then you got you know you got a kind of inauguration if you will you know where you're on the job for two weeks you know so you meet somebody let's just say you know uh, that they're on the job of uh, of agape to discover to discover what faith could possibly have missed what did my faith miss having walked in agape I, I'm seeing the light I'm feeling something I've never felt before I'm experiencing something I never imagined and you meet this person who now have have done the same the problem is when it comes to problem solving, when it comes to demasking, when it comes to releasing the pretentiousness from which we have lived our lives, now the conflict arises. But love, agape love particularly, has answers for all of it, but we're not, we've not been in the journey of unconditionalism, if that's a word, long enough. We haven't been in the journey. We are used to judgmentalism. We're used to criticism. We're used to being abandoned. We're used to being rejected. We're used to all of these antagon these and these 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 rough edges. Let's call it what it is. Rough edges. I'm used to being rubbed the wrong way. I'm used to going off, giving a piece of my mind. But now this orientation of agape, this unconditional hasid, this unconditional mercy, this 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 this, this this experience now I've met someone who also and so now you begin to go from the faith orientation back to the <laughs> the sense realm orientation you switch up and by all means when you interact with people you have to have a mixture of both have both both faith and senses if you will you got to use common sense but sometimes we are struck where and then there are times when we're struck in awe of a beautiful woman who is walking in the orientation of agape I mean it is absolutely unbelievable 
I'm not saying she's walking in the season, the seasonness, if that's a word. I'm making up all these words today. But I'm not saying, I'm saying that they, that, 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 that they too have walked in the orientation of it, the orientation of agape, the orientation. And now, as you sit down, perhaps you have coffee, go to a movie together, you do these various things, and, and, and the past comes up. Or something, the past comes up intentionally or unintentionally because the past always will come up as a test to the, to the, to the, to the longevity or to the, to the authenticity of love. Even in, in, you just met her, you just, you just met him. And you say, well, cosmetically he has a job and he has degrees and he's handsome. He's but but there's something about him, and that's that orientation of agape, that unconditional experience. But then here comes a problem. Somebody say, well, if anything could go wrong, it, 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 you know, if anything could, it'll go wrong. Well, I don't know about that. The in, the inevitability, in, 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 inevitability. I'm thinking about that word. <laughs> you know I'm crazy, right? <laughs> it's inevitable that the you, the real you. See, the purpose of agape is to heal the real you and then send forth the real you in the true potential and intention that you were designed for. But to get you there, it unmasks you first. It 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 strips the pretentiousness away. And and truly, you you know, I'm getting back to that scenario about you. You met that fine, beautiful man. You met that fine, beautiful woman, and you know, there's an era about them. This is not just friendship. This is not just affection. This is not physical. This is not a booty call. This this is unexplainable. This is what is this love? This love is remarkable but this love will strip you of every hypocrisy this love will strip you of every excuse even victims stand naked before agape because the embrace of its love agape is so wide and so high and so deep it goes around to catch you when you fall this 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 agape experience is beyond my descriptive ability. And so you met her, you met him. And the aura of the, of their lives as they talk and share is innocent. But then comes the living. Then comes the reality of living. And questions are asked, and the past is re regurgitated, and memories are stirred, and the subconscious is rattled. And because you've only walked in this love for a short period of time, and believe me, you, for, for many of us, it, it's, even though we might have been in it for decades, it's still a short period of time. Because you've only walked in it for a short period of time, or because agape's journey is not by seniority but by day by day faith and so since you are new to it it becomes frightening and you snap back you react rather than respond you 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 have a flashback you have memories that take you back and then thus for a moment you are momentarily suspended in chaos because you don't know what to do do I refer myself back to what I have been accustomed to or do I keep walking the journey of faith and discover what real agape love is all about and it's a challenge at best it really really is a challenge <laughs> uh, uh, agape Oh, they're flagging me. My time has been gone. Agape is definitely the love 
that requires you to have faith. I cannot believe that you guys let me this. I, I can't be like, believe you guys let me go that far. But I mean, I mean, agape is the love. Agape is the love that allows you the, to journey into the unknown and discover gems of life that can't be found in any other love. Thank you, Mr. Engineers, telling me that's that's my time. Agape. So we're gonna talk some more. You know, I I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You gotta go back and listen again, download it, uh, so that you can understand. I apologize for going over my time uh, because there are people that are coming up behind us on the radio station, and uh, they could have just cut me off. So so thank you so very much. Even though I own the station. Uh, still, I have to be respectful of the time. Thank you so very much. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and beyond. Whatever you do, take care of yourself. Listening to SIPN Radio on the Select USA TV I Broadcasting Network. You're listening to SIBN Radio.